All right, it's time to weld in these uh, panels here. So what I need to do is I need to clean both sides and then use these cool guy little clips and get them all set up. So I gotta work that spot right up here. I got one over here. And then I've got one on one of these doors. Ah, here it is. So I'm gonna get, uh, get these panels taken out by removing these. And then I'll get them all set up to uh, do a little aluminum welding today. Should be pretty fun. All right, here's how it's looking now. It's not sanded all the way down. I only did uh, 80 grit just to kind of get rid of the seams as much as possible so I could see what I was working with. Uh, overall, I'm super happy with it. So now I have to knock out the uh, other three. So let's go. All right, I've got the uh, patches done here. I think they came out really nice. That patch there and then the one up top. And for the patch that's required on the back over here, let me show you what I've got going on. I started to patch it up the same way I did the others, but because there's no support inside, like on a, on a normal, like on the metros that I do, they've got these uh, spars that go in between and then there's sheet metal on the outside. And so the sheet metal is not structural at all, but on this, because it's an eighth of an inch thick, 
there's no structure to the inside. So when I was starting to heat it up, the aluminum was trying to warp. So I actually got a good idea from this fellow YouTuber named AZ Expert, and he does primarily RV repairs, but he, he made a good point about these that because they came in so many different configurations, they had, I don't know if you can see over here, but like from the factory, you see up close they've got they're like pre-punched for where all the rivets would go if you ordered it with different window configurations so he suggested that i i just put a plate over it but then use the bead roller to do a rolling to make it look like it was an option for a factory window that was then riveted in at the factory and i thought that was a great idea so i've got the uh aluminum here all cut out and marked up so what i'm going to do is i'll just do that I'll do that nice bead roll around, similar to how I did that crown emblem on it, and then I'll just pop this in from the inside, and it'll look like uh, it'll look like it was done that way in 1958. Hopefully, <laughs> we'll see. All right, here's how the window's looking. I think it looks fantastic. It really does look like it was a, a factory option for a window. Let me show you the inside. All right, here's how the inside's looking. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a bunch of uh, what looks like rivets up here, but because the rivets that they used were so large, I'm gonna end up using quarter inch carriage bolts with uh, on the outside with acorn nuts on the inside. Let me show you those bolts. So here's the carriage bolts that I'm going to be using. So if there's somewhere like this where you see there's just random holes, I can install these and they end up looking the uh, same as the rivets, especially after it's all polished. So it should look sharp. All right, I've got the uh, frame installed here. It's looking pretty good. So now I just have to install the, uh, the aluminum uh, sheet goes on it and then uh, Hold it up with some Klecko fasteners and then uh, we'll really get to see how the polishing looks. Alright, I've got the service window held up with uh, just one lift strut right now. You can see how the brushed aluminum inside looks. I think it's gonna be really sharp, especially when we do the marquee lighting because it won't be nearly as reflective. Now, when I do these lift struts, I always try to make it where it can be held up on its own by just one. So right now I've got one in, you can see. So this is probably a little bit overkill, but I'd rather have it be a little overkill than have this fall down on someone's head. So these are 100 pound lift struts. They also sell them in 60 pounders. The so 60 pounders probably would have been fine, but because I used 14 gauge steel, this is gonna be plenty strong enough uh, to, to, not, um, to not have the lift struts bend it. And that's what happens if the lift struts are too strong. All right, this is how the cabinets are looking now. These are the small ones that go on the back side. And then top here, I use those little spacers that I planed out and then cut. Uh, to kind of grip these together I just used an inch and a quarter uh, screws there and then I used these cabinet screws here to hold everything together it's more important uh, to hold these cabinets together on this vehicle than it is inside your house because of course in the house they can just bolt up to the wall and the only thing that's really important is right here but for this vehicle it needs to be strong so I got uh, on these cabinet bolts these are uber grade which of course as we all know is one step above bona fide grade so should be pretty strong all right here is where the uh, sink is going to go got it all marked up so i'm just going to get the old jigsaw fired up and see if i can cut this as cleanly as possible look at that easy peasy
right, the countertops are done. I couldn't show you guys uh, the clear coat application because I haven't figured out a good way to film inside my paint booth, but I did an automotive uh, clear coat on top of it, so it's just like a high gloss uh, automotive finish. And boy, it gives this a really nice shine. And because this is a commercial application, it makes it really, really strong and of course water resistant. But boy, I just love the way that gray turned out. This is a sharp color. I'm not sure if I've seen it uh, on this type of an application before, but I love it. All right, guys, that's it for episode three. Thanks for watching. I want to give you a sneak peek on a video I'm releasing next week. It's a first start on a non-running vehicle that I've wanted to own for the last 15 years, but I just haven't been able to find. So I want you to guess what it is right in the comments below, but no cheating if you're following my Instagram because I've already posted a picture of it there. So I'm going to show you two pictures from the owner's manual. It's actually a service manual, and I want you to see if you can guess what it is. This is the motor from the top. And this is the motor from the front. So if you know what it is, no cheating, no looking at my Instagram until you've already posted. So try and guess what it is in the comments below. And then you'll see a video of it uh, next week. Thanks.